Okay, so this video is going to show you how you can use Photoshop to put a really quick, easy filter on whatever photo it is that you're going to use for your Color Harmony portrait series. So remember that you're not buying Photoshop, right? You're just going to use it in the library. Um, the computers in the basement Mac lab are equipped with that. So, all right, so let's get going. So you have your photos saved somewhere on your computer and you're going to, whoops, you're just going to go ahead and drag and drop it into Photoshop or you can open it from Photoshop. Um, okay, let's continue. There we go. All right, so here is my photo that I'm going to use for the demo of Mick Jagger. And remember that your photo should be 8 by 10. This is great because you can see kind of how much space his face takes up in the picture plane. So it's going to be really easy to get in there with lots of detail and do all sorts of interesting things with your drawing and with your painting. So if you need to crop your photo, to get it to uh, use up this much space, then you're gonna go ahead and use the cropping tool. So this is this tool over here on the left. This is your toolbar. So the cropping tool looks like two L brackets, essentially. So you click on that tool, and then if you come up here, you'll see that there are fields where you can actually type in a value and it will give you the parameters or the, you know, the, the picture plane ratio that you're looking for. So I'm gonna go to eight by 10. And then I'm going to go ahead and just double click in there to crop the image. And that doesn't seem to be working. So let's see. There we go. Okay. I'm just not being very patient. So there we have the image. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come and check our levels. So I'm going to go up to image and then over to adjustments and then levels. And this is your white point, your midpoint, and your black point. The midpoint's kind of like your medium gray. So what we're looking for essentially is more of a blown out image. Blown out meaning super high contrast. That way we have fewer details to deal with. So I'm going to take my white point and I'm going to slide the cursor just over a little bit so that I can start to get rid maybe of some of these kinds of lines that I see. I don't want to get rid of everything. So I might actually bring that back a little bit just to there. And you might decide that you don't even need to do this for your photo. This is, this is optional. And then here's my black point. I'm going to pull it over just a little bit. You can see if I pull it over a ton, what's going to happen, right? So I just kind of want to amp that up a little bit, bump it up. And then here's my mid. If I slide it over to my black point, it actually takes, washes out those um, midtones. And if I slide it over to my white, you can see it makes them a lot darker. It's actually kind of a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to leave it right about there. And then when you're satisfied with those levels, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. So now I have an image that's already a little bit simplified because of the way that I've adjusted the levels. So now I'm ready to put my filter on. You'll notice um, I haven't clicked off my cropping tool. Let me do that now. So I'm going to click onto the move tool. This is totally benign, this little cross up here, so that I can't make any changes on the image really with that. So sometimes that's kind of like your safe home base in terms of your where you want to be on your toolbar. Okay, so I'm ready to put the filter on. I'm going to come up to filter and click on that. And then I'm going to go down to filter gallery and I'm going to select cutout. So you'll see that I've been in here before. Um, so let me let me bring it all the way up. Okay, so in my version of Photoshop, the large like the highest level count that I can get for um, values is eight. Now you'll notice, depending on your image, that just because that's the highest value count doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to give me the best image, right? So I'm going to play around with bringing this down. So that's what seven looks like. Looks pretty good. Let's see what six looks like. There I start to lose some of the nostrils and things. So the computer essentially is kind of selecting what it thinks are the most important values. And let's see, remember too that, um, say, let's say I go with four 
Even though these brows don't match up, that doesn't mean that I necessarily have to draw or paint it that way. I can always come in and make this eye darker in places or make the brow darker in places. So don't worry too much if it's not exactly um, perfect. You as the artist are gonna be able to make some decisions just on how you, how you choose to draw or paint it. So if I come all the way down, well that's two actually, you can see it's super simplified, right? It almost looks like a stencil or something. I wanna give myself a little bit more information. So I'm gonna go with three. Let me check four again. And five, yep, I'm gonna go with three. I feel like that's, that's pretty good. It gives me some options. It gives me a mid-tone that I can kind of play around with later on. So let's say I'm happy with that. Once you've simplified your image with the filter, you're going to go ahead and hit OK or Enter. And so there is my image that I'm ready to transfer or ready to collage um, onto my mixed media paper. So you want to save it, obviously. So I'm going to hit Command S to save. Or you could go up to File and scroll down to save. And then for this, you're going to save it as a JPEG. So there is a fair amount of compression on JPEGs, but for what we're doing, it's going to be just fine. Do not save it as a Photoshop document. That might be the default that Photoshop wants you to save it as, but those files are huge when you open them. And so that's going to slow down your computer and possibly crash it. So go with JPEG and then hit save. And then you want maximum quality and you hit OK and it's going to think a little bit and there we go. So at this point I can upload this to my Google Drive or put it on my jump drive, however it is that you like to get your images onto your computer. Um, uh, yeah, so that you can email them to yourself and then print them out at printing services or wherever you're going to print stuff out. Maybe Kinko's. Who knows? Anyway, good luck with this. You can see it's pretty simple, straightforward, and I look forward to seeing your images when I get back.